Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast. Industry leaders share their insights. Five questions in nine minutes because hackers never sleep. Let's get to it. Ryan, I'm excited to have this conversation with you. And I'm sure this is going to do really, really well. I'm I'm really, I I love talking to my brethren in the military. I know that you're currently in the military. So I'm actually going to start this off just a little bit different. Tell us who you are and what you do and where you're at today. Okay. Uh, So my name is Ryan Williams, uh, senior. I am a uh, cybersecurity professional. I I, um, I specialize in uh, setting up networks. So switching, routing, things of that nature. Uh, and I am currently stationed in uh, in Turkey. And what branch of the military are you in right now? Uh, so I'm Air Force. Air Force, wonderful. And you're getting yes, out sir. soon. Are you Are you excited? I'm very excited. Uh, not to get out, like don't get me wrong, but just for the transition, right? I've, I've done um, just shy of 20 years. So I'm ready to uh, to do something different. That's awesome. Well, thank you for your service, and we appreciate you coming into. Appreciate the real world, let's call it, <laughs> and bringing in your <laughs> skills. So let's jump into the second question. What do you love about being a cyber professional? Uh, so it's just being the tip of the spear, right? Like, uh, like cybersecurity has been around for a while, but it's really becoming mainstream. Um, it's ever evolving and just, um, it's just you're always learning. So I really enjoy that aspect of it. And what... What do you think cybersecurity is a top concern means? That, that's the buzzword today, but what does it mean? Right. Uh, so it's, it's protecting the business, right? So every modern business uh, uses technology to either uh, uh, to help and provide services or to collect information to use to, uh, to sell you something or uh, to collect records of some sort. So like you need cybersecurity to protect your business and then uh that's protecting your customers and keeping you out of you know hot water when it comes to regulation and things of that nature i know that you're getting ready to come into let's call it the enterprise space or the commercial world or whatever you want to call it what right. what do you see is a similarity and a difference between the government uh, without giving away trade secrets right <laughs> and right. and what you're about to get into so uh, from the regulation standpoint, is is very similar, right? There are just rules that you have to follow that the government uh, puts on uh, on itself as well as other businesses. Uh, and then when it comes to best practices, they're 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 pretty much the same. I'd say the the only difference is being like the uh, the military is not in the the business of making money, right? It's defending the enterprise so that we are are ready for when our adversaries decide to do something bad, right? As opposed to a business, which is to to generate money, they have shareholders, they have customers they need to protect. Uh, you know, uh, that's like their their bread and butter, right? Like if you make the customers mad, they're not coming back to you, or they're going to leave you. So that's very insightful, and I appreciate you you taking that curveball question for me. What insight do you want to share with our network of cyber professionals? Uh, I would just say, uh, just always have a passion to learn. Like it's ever evolving. The adversary does not sleep, as we saw, like come out of COVID, like their techniques are changing. They are also in the uh, the business of learning, and we just need to uh, find more professionals. So just acquiring more talent, uh, diversifying our talent, right? You have people of color that uh, is always a, a minority in this um, in this industry, as well as just people coming from different industries in general, right? Like you can uh, get a lot from a person who's done something different than just technology, right? Like when it comes to law and other things of that nature as well, like bringing them in and their talent, uh, I think is paramount. That's amazing. I'm going to add a question here before we get to the fun question. Okay. What do you think we can do to bring in more cyber professionals? But I want you to, to really answer that and then start digging into how can we bring it into the more diverse, more culturally relevant, time frame we're in now and and bring those those great assets of of color of women of minorities uh that's an excellent question i would say uh first and foremost it's um like actually finding people right like you have to go out to these communities uh which are, are full of talent uh you know and and kind of uh explain to them what cybersecurity is and how it, it uh can benefit both them and their communities. Um, but you also have to open up um, 
to uh, diversity of talent, right? You can't always find the same people doing the same things because a lot of these, uh, what I would like to call silos, are they have the same type of people, which uh, again, I'm not saying to hire less people. Um, I, I'm kind of dancing around it, right? Like the majority of cybersecurity are white male professionals, right? Um, they're, they're like maybe uh, upwards of maybe 23% female. Uh, and then there is like, maybe seven to nine percent are uh, are people of color uh especially when it comes to like the black community i think there's a few more uh, people who are hispanic that are in it um but, but the, the numbers just are not representative of the uh the population i think a lot of that comes from just uh the the way that we recruit right like you need to find people um who are more diverse who uh can bring you a, a difference of opinion and have seen things differently than you and bring their experiences in and a lot of that comes to uh, going to college campuses uh, if you uh, are looking for talent that is currently in the, the STEM pipeline, but it's also going to high schools, right? Like everyone doesn't need a degree to be in cybersecurity. Uh, a lot of people can start um, uh, doing things in cyber because they have the aptitude to learn and then to to actually produce. And then you don't have to worry about losing that talent because obviously you're going to take care of them. You're going to you know, pay them well and all those things. So I, I think a lot of those things being put together when it comes to recruitment can uh, get you a very... Um, just more diverse, more talented, and as well as you can fill those positions because there's upwards of a million roles that are just vacant. Um, you got to start pulling talent in. So I, I think if you if you go recruiting, looking for diversity, you will find it. That's amazing. And I love how you took the term diversity and and, and we, we understand diversity. Most of us do, at least I hope. Uh, but you took it as as diversity of of the silos as well, right? You know, if you're in digital forensics, let's put people who who, who see things differently, not just right. the way we look, but also the way we see things. And so I appreciate you really just highlighting that. Very cool answer. Uh, let's jump into the fifth question. I guess this is about the seventh or eighth yeah. question, but that's okay. And <laughs> and let's get some fun out of this. Ryan, what's your favorite piece of retro technology that just makes you smile? Uh, so I, I kind of not really a cop out because it's kind of popular again, but I would say uh, record players and vinyl. That's that's what I grew up with. That's what was in my household. I'm a little bit older, um, so not that old though. But uh, you cannot beat the sound quality of vinyl. Like everybody's like, oh, you know, digital is the best way to go. We're not. That's a recreation of the sound. Like a a real record is an impression. It's like the the heart and soul of the music being played. Um, so I'm a big fan of it, but unfortunately it's becoming popular again and it's very hard to find it, uh, at least for like, you can buy a crate of vinyls for like a couple bucks, but now like each one is like $10, like what's going on? <laughs> Do you have a favorite record? Uh, so I grew up with a lot of uh, Anita Baker and Luther Vandross, so pretty much any, any of their records um, uh, will definitely do, but you know, Jackson 5 was there as well. And um, just like a quote unquote good music, right? It's a lot of Motown, things of that nature. That's what I really enjoy. That's amazing. Ryan, thank you. This has been an exceptionally insightful and really fun podcast. Appreciate you. Thank you. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching the CyberPro Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new podcasts and bonus content.